All right, dearly beloved, welcome to the first Magic Mind back after vacation time. It was nice to be away for two weeks. That was glorious. Uh, and now we've entered into this weird August cold that's come in, hence the hoodie. It was like we went from hot to cold, but I think summer's coming back again next week, hopefully. So that'll be nice. Um so just before I press record, we we're talking about just uh, the pressures that are natural uh, on the journey of entrepreneurship as we're, you know, really starting to try and create momentum of building an audience that's being responsive to our offerings, getting our signature workshop touring uh, virtually in person, creating a bunch of different offerings that uh, we can be rolling out uh, throughout the candle year, calendar year that allow us to continually generate revenue. And all of these pieces take a lot of time. As we know, you have to build landing pages and marketing campaigns. Uh, we need to be creating a content calendar around the next thing that we're rolling out and launching. Um, and all of these things, it's like we there's never a guarantee, you know, like I've had launches that totally flop. I've had launches that do exceptionally well. And that's why it's important to not put 100% of our eggs into just one single basket, because if we only have the one basket, then we're kind of out of luck if things don't go perfectly well for us. And so um, I had a, a coaching call with a Magic Mind member who I haven't seen around since she joined. She's been working kind of in the, the background, but I won't give any names. I'll just share the situation because I think this is super relevant. So she's building her healing business. And she has come into a lot of financial hardships over the last uh, year. Uh, she has a piece of property that is beautiful. She had multiple uh, little rental spaces, little cabins and an RV. Uh, she has a healing space and she wasn't getting any clients. And so when we dove into her session, there was all this stress and when we're stressed, we're not thinking clearly. When we're when we're in fear mode of like fear of losing a home, fear of losing our house, fear of a launch not working out, we're in that survival stress, which doesn't help us see the solutions clearly. And so we had this 45 minute coaching call and and I knew going into it, it was kind of like one of those emergency calls where it's like, OK, I got to figure shit out now and I have to take action today so that I don't lose my my land and my home. It was at, it was at that level. And so we talked about, you know, all of her focus on like how do I get more clients? Clients was the only thing she could see that could make her money. And when we started to like take an inventory of like what other leverageable assets or relationships do you have in your life that might not necessarily be directly aligned with where you're trying to generate revenue right now. And it became very clear that with a day's worth of work, she could clean out her, her empty cottages and the RV and the yurt, and she could start bringing people to her land for Airbnb and for personal creative retreats. And so that became one of the things. And then she could have all these add-ons for people that want to come stay at her place. She could post to her, her email list, to her social media. She could send out messages to her friends and family saying, hey, I have this place. Do you need a silent retreat? Do you need to come write a book? Do you want to come get healing work with me for an extended few days and then stay in one of my cabins and cottages? And so I got an email literally like a week later and her whole life had been turned around she literally spent the next day getting all these places ready to go and she went from like you know not having very much money to i think if, i wish i could find the email but i believe it was over ten thousand dollars in bookings happened like within days of it happening all of a sudden it was just like the turnaround happened for her uh because she wasn't thinking straight. And we're like, oh, like there's all these other income streams that are right around me that I haven't been paying attention to because I'm just focused on client, 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 give me more clients. And so it's just a really interesting thought experiment, uh, especially as entrepreneurs. We're always in the trenches. We're building our next offering and our next thing. But perhaps there's some really low hanging, ripe fruit that we could access almost immediately. I had one of those ripe pieces of fruit the other day. I just had an inkling to reach out to Mind Valley 
And I was like, hey, what's up? It's been a while. Do you need a track? You need some new tracks? You haven't licensed my whole library yet. Here's the ones you don't have. And it was like a very quick $7,500 sale that happened. Wow. I was just like, that's great. So, <laughs> you know, we just we just don't know. But if we if we step back and ask ourselves the questions like, what else do I have? What fruits are ready to fall from the branches that I could e easily leverage right now? Another one of those, and I don't know how this one's going to pan out, but, you know, I'm on Insight Timer for my meditations and I make maybe $30 a month on that platform. It's my least successful platform. I have a lot of followers, but I don't make much money. And so I was like, well, what if I, they now let you create courses. I was like, what if I created a, a themed course five lessons, five meditations, and like an intro. Um, and I just leveraged what I already have in the platform. And so I launched a course a couple of weeks ago on there that looks like it has a few hundred people have already gone through it. Um, I haven't received my check from them yet. That'll be coming in September to based on revenue. So I'm, I'll be curious to see if like, I don't know, maybe three hours of effort is actually going to generate a bunch of money for me. But that was another thing of like, well, there's this avenue. I could easily spend a few hours and and turn what I already have into a course. And let's just see what happens. Because I've heard of other people who make nothing on, on licensing their tracks, but they do pretty well on selling their courses on there. So that was just another thing. If, so let's just take a moment right now and ask ourselves the questions of like, aside from what I'm doing as the thing that I am offering in the world, what other pathways might be available to make money immediately? Like within the next 24 hours to seven days, what else could I do? What what are the ripe fruits in my orbit that I, if I was just to put a little tiny bit of time and attention to, I could leverage and make a bunch of money? So let's just take a couple minutes and just brainstorm. Ask yourself that question, write it out and see what comes through. And I will just say with, you know, the decluttering queen here, Katie, uh, maybe it's selling some shit that you don't need anymore. Maybe you got two cars, you only need one. Maybe you've got, you know, maybe you've got a motorhome or a trailer that sits there and you only use it once a year. Like there might be things that you could let go of that would be liberating and financially beneficial for you that you could reinvest into your business or you could take yourself on a vacation. So take a couple minutes, ready, set, go. I'm going to do the same question for myself.
All right. So that's the exercise. I would encourage everybody to take at least a half hour to dig deeper into the one that you think could have the quickest return. And and the whole purpose of this little sermon was um, sometimes if we feel like we're grinding and not getting the returns to just like lift our head and see where the universe can support us. Because there's there's chances are if we open ourselves up to receiving and we open our minds to what pathways do exist for us, um, then we probably can. And I, I've been at this for 20 years and I have so many income streams that come in and like trickles and, and fountains. It's just like there's always somewhere. And sometimes we just need to prime the pump on one of these receiving valves that we've set up long ago but forgotten about. And then all of a sudden they can start pouring in for us.